What's going on guys, Sasuke the Savage here and today I'm going to be reviewing Kingdom chapter 579. And surprise, surprise, I'm finally happy with the chapter and it's been a while since I said that. But after reading this chapter, I'm like, Hara, my nigga, this is what I've been waiting for. This is it. Now this review should be very short, so let's jump right into it. Now with this chapter, we kind of find out exactly what this awakening was and it was pretty much what most of us already suspected. Just a boost of morale. And I think a more accurate assessment of what this awakening was, was that it was a boom in morale because we can see that Shin got his boys hype. Now, while most of us anticipated that this awakening was going to be caused due to some speech by Ohan and Shin, some people thought otherwise. I'm thinking to myself, what did some of us expect from Shin and Ohan? Did we expect them to go Super Saiyan, gear forth, have a Bankai like what did we think that we were going to do here? And I know that we've done some supernatural shit in Kingdom. Like, we have Kyokai's dance. Sometimes the horses do some crazy shit. We have Karin's boobs. But for the most part, we stay grounded in reality. Now, some people may have expected the speech to happen. But they don't think that this should be enough to invoke an awakening in a right wing. Shout out to Mel, by the way. But the reason why I disagree with that is because... This is shit we have already seen in Kingdom. This isn't something that horror pulled out of his ass. We've seen this on numerous occasions. So the fact that we have already witnessed this, I think it's all right. I'm in a position where I believe that this awakening will change the momentum when it comes to Chen's right wing and Zhao's left. However, I don't believe that this will change the tide in the war. I have said this countless and countless of times, and I'm pretty sure others have as well. Ozen will be the ultimate X factor in this war. With the awakening of the Gyoku Ho unit and the Hishin unit, I think the best that they can hope for is to take the lives of Cho'Garyu and Gyo'un. That's it. And taking out those two commanders will be a great positive in this war. However, it's not going to change their ration situation. I think that's only something Ozen can solve at this point. We also have to note that we have seen this before and even with all of this happening, it's not going to be the determining factor in Chen's victory. Now, finally, talking about Shen's speech. I like the speech. I don't think it was the best one that we have seen in Kingdom. But what I like about it is that Shen goes up in front of everybody and he's talking about the roots of the Heishin unit. How they only started as a hundred man unit and ever since then, Shin has been on this non-stop grind to the top and that the people in front of him, everybody and their sacrifices are going to be the reason why Shin becomes a great general under the heavens. And for me, what always makes Shin's speeches more impactful is that we as readers already know what Shin had to go through to get where he is right now. Shin went in front of everybody and talked about how the Heishin unit only started as a hundred man unit, but Shin himself started as a self-made slave. Somebody who was never taught to fight with a sword by anybody. Yeah, he's fought with his childhood friend, Hyo. Yeah, he's fought with Kyokai to polish up his training. He's been mentored by Oki and Dukyo, but he's never had a handout ever in his life. Everything he's achieved has been on his own merit. I think this is the reason why Bihei only needs to look at Shin to get motivated because Bihei knows better than anybody else, even more so than Kyokai because Bihei grew up in the same village as Shin. He has been with Shin in his first campaign when they were just a go unit of five. So when Shin is giving out his speech, I feel like I'm a part of the army. Like, I'm getting hyped too. I'm like, like hell, yeah. Like, hell, we gonna let them niggas get us. Like, let's go. Let's beat their ass. Now, since I'm the king of nitpicking and complaining, I do have one gripe with this chapter, and that's the fact that we didn't see the totality of Ohan's speech. We got a little bit of it, but not the whole thing. Now, I will say that it would have been difficult for Hara to put both speeches in this chapter, not only because of the pages, but because it would have not have had the same impact if you tried to do that. The reason why I believe it's an issue that we didn't see Ohan's entire speech in this chapter is because we have already seen the leadership of Shin numerous times, so his leadership cannot be questioned at all. We have seen Molten's leadership him taking over the entire left wing. So his leadership can't be questioned. Ohan, on the other hand, he doesn't seem to be all that motivational. And it's not entirely his fault. 
it's also the fault of his upbringing. Like, Ohan comes from a good family and he's rich. So, like, if he tried to give a speech to everybody in the same manner that Shin did, there's going to be some people thinking in the back of their mind, like, nigga, you're rich as fuck. Like, you, like you, you're trying to compare me to you. Like, I didn't come from a good family. Like, fuck you. Like, imagine... Bill Gates' son goes up to you, gives a speech, and talks about how you need to grind for that money. You're going to look at him like, bruh, what? But like I said, that was just a minor issue. I thought that Ohan's speech would have enhanced the chapter, but we good either way. But what got me even more hype, even more so than Shin's speech, was Shin charging at the end of the chapter, bruh. Like, mm. yeah, yeah. Like, I was getting some Dukio vibes, bro. And if you don't know, Dukio is one of my favorite characters in Kingdom. And I will make a video on that soon. Like, my favorite generals in Kingdom. So, be on the lookout for that. No plan, no strategy, no tactics. Shin charging, using his instincts. So, we'll see where those instincts take him. I do believe that Gyo-Un and Cho-Garyu will die on this day. Also... Where the fuck is Jin and Tan? Where did they go? Like, we haven't seen these guys since chapter 510. So it's been well over a year since we've seen these guys. So, Hara, what's up? I hope that Jin and Tan have a role in this clash. But since we have not seen them do anything on this battlefield, I don't think that they will. But guys, that ends my thoughts right there. Like I said before, I was happy with this chapter, so thank you, horror. Like, thank you, dude. Thank you. I'm ready to jump back on the bandwagon. But guys, that is it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. Sasuke the Savage, out. Dude, what the fuck I want? Yo. Do what the fuck I want. Yup. All my bitches look like this. All my hoes are on my Christmas list. All I want for Christmas is two bad bitches. Sasuke be thy name.